Where you from? Nigga, straight out Mississippi. One more time. Nigga, you know I'm so Mississippi that I might walk to the mailbox with no shoes on. And don't lock the door when I leave home. Ain't got nothing wrong. I'm just Mississippi with it. All day. <laughs> yeah. We got Mississippi in the building. I love it, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's I always black be telling you how fine Mississippi women are. Yes, you do. And I've seen it. You've taken it. But this is an example of a fine Mississippi black woman. Fine and, and smart. Successful. And, and smart. And smart. Can you cook? You can't. Fuck, I don't give a you fuck. You gonna be from Mississippi, I don't and you gonna fuck. come on here and say it you don't cook. matter that you can't cook. This was the one time you were supposed she, to laugh, she. She can't cook, but she can build the app to find you a bunch of motherfuckers who can. Oh, that's how you wanna do it? That's how she do it. All right, it. since you gonna do it like that, then we gotta open the black market back up. Yes, we got to, love. Cause we got a black lady in here today that got her own apps and everything. Let me get my paperwork, cause Miss Sheena Allen is amazing. Yes. First of all, she gets major props just from being from Mississippi. Um, she has Sheena Allen apps. Yeah, she does. Uh, graduated from Southern Mississippi. Golden Eagles. Come on, there you man. Go. I know a little bit about it. Majored in psychology, film, things of that nature. Um, you say you're leaving Walmart and you got a long receipt. Yes. So how did that spark you? to create your own business? Uh, so I went to college, Southern Miss. I actually didn't want to go to college, number one. I don't blame you. Uh, I wanted to go to art school. I was, Still can. Yeah, I don't really have time. Yes, um, you do. You can build an app and make time. Exactly. <laughs> I, I really think of the strategy through that. Hey, I'm just telling but you it's possible. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm going to put on my list there you go. of things to, to get to. Um, but yeah, I went to Walmart, had this super long receipt. Not like a CVS receipt, but it was a long receipt. Um, and I was like, I wish there was an app I could keep up with my money and my receipts. And I couldn't find it in the app store. So I was like, figure out how to create an app to do what I want to do. And that was the very first app that I did in 2011 while in college. Mm, wow. Now, did you have a background in coding or app and computer science or anything no, like that? No, she gangsta. Hold on. Let me tell you what she did. <laughs> Hold on. She made her first app in Microsoft Word, bro. So you even went and my, I can't make a paper in That's Microsoft Word. That's frustration right there, bro. And you didn't went in there and figured out how to make a whole app? It's only a black woman could. Uh, so I, I had no coding background. I double majored in film and psychology. So I, I was non-technical. Me too. That was the same thing. I was not film, but communications with a minor psychology. I see. All right. Um, I just went to school. What you major in? Bullshit. School. Just being at school. <laughs> General studies. Really? Oh. Business. OK. Business. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I was non-technical, and I was trying to figure out, like, how do I design the app, get the flow going, like, write it all out. And the only thing I could think of where you can make, like, boxes, which is how your phone looks, was, like, Microsoft Word. So I went and, like, took the text box that you're supposed to put text in, and I actually used it to design out how I wanted the screens to look in the app. And that's how I got started. Man, Smart as hell. You smart as hell. So you said that was your first app. What was the second one, and what came after? Like, break us down. Yeah, so Shana Allen Apps was my first company, which I don't run anymore. I now run my second startup, which is called Capway. OK. Um, but my first company, Shana Allen Apps, I did the first app, Walmart. It was meant to keep up your money and your receipts. Second app uh, was an app called Words on Picks, which you probably can guess. It was Words on Pictures. So graduated uh, in December 2011. 
And I told my parents, I was like, so I think I want to be a tech entrepreneur. I want to move to Silicon Valley. I want to be a tech entrepreneur. But, you know, being from Terry, Mississippi, my mom and my dad was like, uh, nah. So my dad mainly was like, so you got two degrees in student loan debt? His words was, take your ass and get a nine to five with some steady income, is what he told me. Um, and not that he, he didn't necessarily believe in tech, but like, that was foreign. You know, parents be like, do the safe thing, know what you want to do. And I was like, no, nah, I, want, I want to do this tech piece. And so I went pretty much against like my parents' wishes and decided to just dive deep into tech. So my third app was an app called Twitbooth, where I wanted to pretty much create like only media for Twitter. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to see any tweets, only media. Like only whatever you tweet, like pictures or videos. So pretty much I wanted to make a Twitter version of Instagram. And uh, yeah, I flipped that out and got a nice email from Twitter. Uh, so I'm taking that down. <laughs> and not long after the, the media tab in the Twitter app came about. So, Dirty motherfucker. <laughs> so that was my experience there. And then my fourth app was an app called Dublin. So it was, I had a friend who had a, for her graduation picture, she took a picture where it was two of her in one picture. Somebody had photoshopped it. And I was like, that is super dope. And I was like, I'm gonna create an app that I can do that. And she's like, that makes no sense. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an app like that. Did it, and I went from doing like 50 downloads to doing like 10,000 in one day. And... Yeah. Yeah. So, left Mississippi, moved to the Valley, uh, left Silicon Valley, moved to Austin. So I built my first company out in Austin. And yeah, I mean, it was learned a heck of a lot heck of a lot. And now I'm on to my second startup, which is Capway, which is a financial technology startup, also known as FinTech, um, where pretty much I, I run my own bank. God damn. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, you see why she don't got to know how to cook? Nah, that fucking got her own cause, bank, nigga. Because we was, we was doing apps, <laughs> apps, company. Bank, like nigga, right. what is You know how much shit I talk? Yeah, your girl can't cook, yeah, yeah but your can't get, make a bank, nigga. She got a bank. She got a whole bank. Now, so, what, what, is, what is Capway? So the, so the original idea of Capway, the name of it actually means a new way of doing capital. So that's how the name came about. Um, but it came about because I was going back and forth between like California and I was in Austin, I would go to New York for like my first company. Um, I would always see signs when I walked in that would say like, you know, no debit or credit. I mean, debit or credit only, like no cash allowed. And this was like 2016. But when I went home to Mississippi, people only carry cash. And so I was like, one day it's gonna happen where the cashless economy is gonna hit Terry or hit Mississippi. And like, we gonna be up shit's creek cause like we only know cash. And I wanted to create an opportunity for people who were from places like Terry, Mississippi where when that happened, they had access to like debit cards or opportunities in the financial sector. And so that was how the idea actually started. Um, it ended up growing from there. So it went from saying, hey, how do we create a, a bank, or as we call them, neobanks. Um, how do I create that for people who are mainly unbanked, underbanked, don't have access to financial services? And it grew to then saying, you know, how do we talk about money in a way that is relatable? Like, not your textbook financial literacy stuff. Like, how do I talk to people like how you understand it? I want to talk to my 16-year-old nephew and be like, look, you want to go buy a car, that cash car you want is going to cost you, you know, five grand. You need more than five grand. You got to buy a tag. You got to, you know, I'm talking, I, I wanted to present it in a way like it was relatable, it was understandable. Right. Um, not dumbed down, I hate that word, but it was, I just feel like no one ever talked to us in a way that like, it made sense. Right. Um, so it went from doing like, so now we have an entire content arm to Capway, so we do this a whole bunch of content. Uh, of course we have the banking piece, so we have our debit cards, and then now we're getting everything from like payments to commerce to, so it went from being like one neo bank to how do we build an entire ecosystem um, of financial services and products. I want a bank. I don't, but I, I do. want to know somebody who got one, and now I do. That's I want, what it is. I want my own bank, too. I want an app. I got you. What do you want? Mm. Let's talk about it. I'm, I want a whole bank with some cryptocurrency. Okay. We want to accept all forms of currency, from crypto 
T -E -T. E -B -G, I already know it. You can't get Carlos no bank. This nigga start dressing like the Monopoly man. That's <laughs> one of my goals. <laughs> so, the crypto piece. Yeah. Definitely. Are you, in, are you invest in crypto now? Just very small, because I don't trust them people. Who don't you trust? The whole industry. You keep your money in your house, don't you? Mm -mm. No. Don't never say no. that. No. 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 You know, that's how people used to do. No, no we don't do that me. no more. Not me. Man, no. Ain't shit at my house. No. I ain't even met my house. I don't, yeah, have, I mean. I don't have money. Yeah, I don't, I don't that's been my whole goal. Nope. That's why I created this. To get some money. It's, crypto is actually interesting. It is, it is one of those. It's super risky, though. So I'm I know. That. You'll very... wake up broke and naked. You went to sleep with clothes and lost no, everything. You went to sleep rich and woke up yeah. broke and naked. Naked? Yeah. Like, how? Yeah. Like somebody actually came in your house while you were asleep yeah. and took yeah. all your possessions. <laughs> he literally woke up naked on the floor. So how do you, how do you, you know, because there's probably a lot of people that's watching this that's now, like, how do I even get started in doing a bank? Like, what's the process of getting your own bank? Like, what are the... Like, I know what you got to do to go get a loan, so to get a whole bank, like, is that a different process? Is it a long process? You evil, because you knew you was going to fuck us up with this. I see how you sitting there like they didn't know about the bank. <laughs> you could have warned me. So it is... You want a water or something nice? I don't want you to be... It. You want Capri Sun? Uh, I, I love Capri Sun. What, what, what kind? What kind do you prefer? This fruit is Fruit Punch. punch. Got a bank Damn. of Capri Suns. That's what we got. My favorite one. <laughs> Have a Capri Sun while we discuss this. This is this is Mississippi all day. I've been in trying the country, to tell these folks. You know, watermelon. We about to upgrade Capri and get Sun. the big pouches though. Oh. Major flex. Does that mean like you know you got like an investment raising your Series A, your Series B? Yeah, you know, it's just a flex. Okay, I understand. Fruits of our labor. <laughs> the fruit punch that shows the fruits of your labor. Exactly. So we're going bigger. Okay. Just because it's in the budget. We're going to go back on tour. I mean, if y'all need a special guest. We're going to need, need, we need somewhere to put I this money in when we get you on are, tour. You are the special guest now. Teach me how to get a special bank. If you want to show up and then do our deposit right there on the spot, that would be fucking clutch. Well, there's some, I mean, there's, we, can, we can do that. Um, you know, you should pull, no, you got cash out? Mm -mm. Exactly. Now you have Capway. I need it. Exactly. So um, there's some things we are doing. Let me get your code too. when I do it. Because I want my shit to be like, when I log in, I want my shit to go straight to VIP status. I've got you. Uh, but we are doing some things that will be instant. So we do send and receive money just like you do with some of the other players. But we're also getting to like payments. So we're getting to like tipping. So if you don't have cash when you go out, but you can instantly tip somebody through Capway. Mm. Uh, so some things we are working on that'll be really instant, I'm trying to. But, but how do you get to that point, though? Do you just go in and be like, hey, give me some money, I want a bank. <laughs> like, or do you, like, what is the process behind so, that? So, well, first off, you gotta be able to write your strategy out, exactly what do you want to do. Banking is a super, super it's very highly regulated. So it's, it's a lot of rules. Oh, I know. That you, that you have to follow. You can't even go get all your money out at once. Exactly. It's, it's a super, it's, it's really interesting. Compliance and banking is, is very interesting. There's things that I didn't know before I went into it. Then now when I look back at banking, I'm just like, now I understand why give things happen. Can you give us one? One example of, of that? Um, ACH. So if someone sends you ACH and it takes two or three days, it's because of, of how much fraud happens. So they want to make sure that it's cleared on your side and the other person's side. So if it was to happen instant, the problem with that would be that if I sent you 300 bucks and it went through, if, if it was to go through instantly, which you technically you cannot, I might go out and pull out my 300 bucks. And so even though you got yours, the bank now is on, on the hook because I took out my, my 300 bucks. Mm. So it's a fraud issue. Um, how payments go, it's like payment rails. It's, the United States actually is, is the worst for fraud. So we are, we do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, we got a lot of stealers. Yeah, we do. Scammers. The dark web is, is really interesting. Um, 
So people just find ways to steal money. Right. So um, even like your debit cards, which seems so simple, like the card art on your debit cards has to go through so many levels of approval. That's why you've probably never seen like some crazy looking debit card. There's like rules you have to follow of how they have to be, have to have, have to, how they look and how they be designed. So like I can't do a design and be like, that's what our debit card is going to look like. If we're going through like Visa, Visa has to say, yep, that that fits what we want to do, that fits our brand, that looks right, really? I approve it. Somebody put us on their debit card. Yep, they sure did. I don't know they, how they got approved, but <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? More power to them. So is there a level of an amount of capital that you have to start a, a bank? Like, do you have to have a certain amount of money to even get into the thought process of doing that? Yeah, so usually most, most vendors that you work with when you're doing like what we call neo-banking, uh, most require at least a minimum of a million dollars. So, which means you have to go and start raising money from outside investors. They do. That's what they mean. <laughs> so you wow. you look to start raising like your you the just... kind of the process. You raise your pre-seed round, your seed round, your Series A, your Series B, all the way up to eventually you either get acquired, somebody buys you, or you go public. What was your experience like out there in the valley, the Silicon Valley? I'm not. There's uh, a lot of valleys. Nah, not the one. Not the other one. Not the yeah. other one. The, the valley. So I, was, I had two different two different sides of that. Okay. One side was there are not a lot of black people. People in general, black people. No, not at all. Uh, which is pretty highly noted. There's numerous articles about it, um, and it's I don't think it's going to ever change. It's right. just it is what it is. But on the other side of that, I learned a lot because your biggest tech companies are there. That's where your Facebook, your Google. I mean, your everything probably outside of Amazon and Snapchat is based in, in Silicon Valley. So you learn a lot, like their mindset, how they think, how they work, why they do the things they do. Um, that was the first time coming from where I came from that I understood wealth. So I'm from Terry, Mississippi. My definition of wealth was like seeing a rapper in a nice car with a gold chain. I'm just being like, that's, that's what I knew to be like rich and wealthy. And then I moved to Silicon Valley and I realized that people who was worth like a billion dollars drove like Camrys and how they thought about money was just so different from how I grew up thinking about money. So I learned the true definition of wealth and how they go about wealth, which was not how I grew up. So I, it, I, it was two sides. You had your side where it was like no one looked like you, which was honestly a big part of why I wanted to come back to Atlanta and do the company here in Atlanta. Like I wanted it to be about true building wealth within the black community. No, don't get me wrong, Capway is for anybody. It's not like we only bank, you know, black or brown or whatever. We bank anyone. But my idea of that was, I feel like power comes with money. And money comes with being able to build a global company. But I still want to do that in a place with people that look like me, which is why I chose Atlanta. But our black wealth has a long way to go. I mean, the average black family, I think our net worth now is about $17,000, $18,000. Which not is, us. Which is really, really... <laughs> not it, us. It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so... It's, it's fucked up, but... Nigga... Oof. Shit. That's why that should give me chills. Yeah. 17,000. Yeah. The whole family? Yep. Everybody. Even the baby. Yep, the baby. That's that's who the seventeen thousand really belong to. He <laughs> never see it. Everybody else negative. Yeah. <laughs> that baby got the weight of the family on his shoulders. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so, like, where do you want it to be? If you you know, if you had to, to say what you wanted to end up being, totally. Like, do you want it to be something that you build and sell to somebody, or do you want it to be something that you? run the gamut for years and years? No, my my goal is that we'll go public. So mm. it'll be something that my great-great-grandkids will still have. You know, I'm not saying that I will always be the CEO or always, you know, necessarily be part of it. You know, the guy, CEO of Amazon done this step down, but he's going to always, his great-great-great-grandkids are going to eat off Amazon. So that's, for me, that's my goal with this company, that even if I'm not the CEO 20 years from now, I've built it, I have enough shares, I've set myself up with like my great, great, great grandkids will be able to eat off Capway. Hey. Already? And there's, there's no cap you, in that, but it's the great, Capway. Great. I'm planning for one grandson. Everybody after that, 
<laughs> yeah, 17,000, that's it. Gonna look at your pictures of your granddad in HD. <laughs> we got, we're talking, it's generational wealth. Man, I know, one generation. <laughs> See, that's the thing, that you say generational wealth, I got that tattooed on my leg. We got the generational curses that we gotta break, so yeah. you don't get to be generationally wealthy until you break that curse and it be on, mm -mm. be on that baby with that 17,000 to grow up. I just had a vision, I'm, we gonna be generationally good. Yeah, because we the yeah, broke it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get out here and break them curses, man. Right. That, you get a the camera. The curse of financial, in house. Just financial instability. That just plagues so many of our families. So to be in a position where you have a black woman who started a bank, nigga, that is amazing. It's not all, I mean, a lot of it is it's not our fault. I think we do put a lot of pressure, I think, uh, on I mean, us. I don't think and none of it's our fault, to be it's, honest. Yeah, it's, it's we, systemic. Very much so. Very, very much so. So it's... I think we get a lot of, um, a lot of people want to put it on us, but it's it's so deep, like you said, it's, that goes way past, oh, you should get a, you know, you should get a job, you should work hard, you should get a better education. Like, to me, that's one of those excuses that people try to put up on, especially the black community. But yeah. no, that, we're still trying to dig ourselves <clears throat> out of 400 years, and yeah. it's not easy. Especially when they're still putting things in place that yeah. stops us from getting Yeah, it. railroad you all the I way. I just get it that you're a very smart lady. You get what I'm saying? Like, she gonna get them billions. Man, all the way. I'm glad she came here early. Hell yeah, like where can people catch up with you and and socialize with you and check in and catch up on everything you got going on, Miss Allen? Well, I'm the special guest on the tour. Um, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> she gonna just be on, she gonna stick her head out. Uh, yeah, the money good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the show can go going. on oh, then. Go, I bet. <laughs> First, really quick, is this, this tour is coming to Mississippi, right? Biloxi. Okay. Wait, what happened to Jackson? We already went to Jackson. She talking about the Ghetto Legends tour. Hey. Yeah, the Ghetto Legends. The tour. return of the Ghetto Legends. Yes. <laughs> Bro, that's so hard. We might have to make that like some tour merch or something. Yeah. Like. Okay, so why not Jackson again? Well, the thing was is like when we were routing this tour, everything ain't like all the way back yet. So we had to like pick some spots that was like available. Available. Yeah, everything ain't open. I mean, we can definitely throw Jackson yeah, in. Yeah, we love Jackson. You know, I'm the city Jack all Town. We, you know, we do a show. We'll talk about this later. Of how we Jackson. Route. Then yeah. go up to Oxford. And, yeah, all that. Shit, we just do a whole Mississippi Memphis. tour, man. We go to Grenada yeah, right. and Tupelo and Brookhaven and Hattiesburg, Vicksburg. Kosciuszko. Look at you. Starkville. Hey. Holly Springs. Hey. <laughs> okay. Batesville. Oh. Hey, Mississippi. <laughs> I, I'm actually impressed. Really? I am. No, I'm really. Most people know like two cities in Mississippi. I know the entire, all of it. I took Mississippi studies, bro. We had to take a, a fucking test with the whole state map and you had to fill it out. I'm, I'm actually honestly very impressed. I mean, just honestly, most people be like Mississippi, like Jackson, Oxford, we get Meridian. You got to name the Bilux. weird places. Don't nobody know like Money and Alligator, Lumberton, Money, Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, Money, Mississippi. That's where the Emmett Till shit happened. In Money, Mississippi. Money, Mississippi. You got to visit. No, I don't. <laughs> Not if that's what Emmett did. I ain't there. Shouldn't nobody to visit there after Emmett went. No. It's a lot of history, though it is. It is. Yeah, I, I read about it. But you don't want to see it? Mm -mm. No, I'm Rolling good. Fork. So Golden, Golden Fork. Golden Fork. Rolling Fork. Rolling Fork. That's where Muddy Water is from. Oh, okay. Rolling Fork. That's what you do when you, never mind. Sunflower County. That's where B.B. King's from. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Oprah from Kosciuszko? She is? Yep. Yeah, Oprah don't like the claim was for some reason. And Morgan why. Freeman, he's from Charleston. <laughs> Look at that. Mississippi history. Oh, Brett Forth? He's from Kim, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Brett Forth. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Oh, you want to keep going? Yeah. Uh, Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice from Mississippi, too. <laughs> what part? Uh, he's, God damn it, Itabina. Edabina. Edabina. You familiar? Edabina. Long time Edabina. for me to remember all this shit. Edabina, Mississippi. Went to, uh, where did he go to school down at? Uh, Mississippi Delta College. 
Where's Green Brandy Mississippi from? Valley, didn't it? Brandy, they're from uh, Brookhaven. Macomb. Macomb. Right outside of Brookhaven. Exactly. It's the same thing. I mean, Snoop Dogg, his grandma's from Macomb, Macomb. down there. Exactly. See? Dash, Dash Dillinger owns a house in Mississippi. He does. Rick Ross. It's from Clarksdale. Clarksdale. See, exactly. he claims my image. Y'all see exactly. that? Well, he, he claims Clarksdale also. Every now. Soldier you ever Boy. seen this movie? This, uh, you Soldier ever seen Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is from Batesville, Batesville. Mississippi. Batesville. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what? I told you. you. Are on it. I told uh, you. I just know everybody Mississippi. from Mississippi. David Banner. Is, he's from Jackson, and then you got to say Big Crick. Big Crick. Oh. Of course. He's, he's from Meridian. Right there, over there. I was so impressed. You really didn't believe Did he was from Mississippi like that when I told you? The white girl, like the white girl who told plays you? on Chase and Amy, you ever seen the movie Chase and Amy? Mm -hmm. That white girl, she live in Oxford. What's yeah. the dude's name that you showed me his house that wrote the books? William Faulkner, he's William from Faulkner. Oxford. Yeah. But no, it was somebody else that's there that's that's popular now that had that big old land that you showed. Oh, you're talking about John Grisham. John Grisham, yeah. He's from Oxford. You're on the list of famous Mississippians. I'm on the list? <laughs> well, suck my dick. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Tommy Davidson is from Mississippi. I thought Tommy Davidson was from D.C. He's from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Damn, Tommy. You tricked shit out of me. He probably was born in Mississippi. <laughs> There's a lot of people from Mississippi, man. I'm, I'm so impressed. Yeah, we have a lot of, we got some Olympians. Oh, we are, and... no, we got to get Oprah and those people to come back, though, so. Oprah? She ain't coming back. She might. She could send some money. Maybe she might open a school. And she ain't going to watch this. I be talking about it all the time. I be trying to holler at her. I'm trying to holler at her. Yeah. Oprah fuck around and get with a Mississippi like nigga like me. It's all rap. I have a growing up have natural shit. <laughs> Y'all see Oprah yeah. had a little twist in there. Uh, you see Oprah come out with a twist out with that bunny with that moving on. <laughs> What? Dragging them feet? Hey, y'all, come on around. <laughs> Me and Over them bought 900 acres in Mississippi. I'm so impressed. Well, good. Because most people just don't know Mississippi like Well, that. hey, I told you, I, I don't know Mississippi, I but I know more this nigga's with me. Mississippi. Mississippi is Jonathan in the Jonathan Bender, he played for the Pacers. He from Picayune. Yeah, he was Picayune. Picayune, Mississippi. He played basketball for a long ass time. Picayune. Lorenzo Wright. He Lorenzo played. Lorenzo Wright. Rest in peace, um, Lorenzo Wright. A lot of basketball. Oh, we got um, Jennifer Gillum. She's a U.S. gold medalist. She's from Abbeville. Her and her sister. Peggy. Hey, cold with that Mississippi, man. I know my shit. I, yeah, I feel you. We got some famous white I people, I would have named Tommy Davidson a few minutes ago, but Mississippi. Hell yeah. What do we do? We got... What's his name? Faith Tucker Hill? Carlson? What's the dude name with the box head? Shepard Smith. He went to Ole Miss on Fox News. Shepard Smith? The motherfucker with the square head. Oh, Shepard. Yeah. All right. Oh, Shep you Smith. Faith Hill. Faith Hill. Great country music singer. See? That's Sam. Mm-hmm. We got, a, we got a few yeah. now. I'm just, we got to figure out a way to Biloxi. Bring them Biloxi's all back. great. We just got to make a Who the fuck from Biloxi? Up, Is anybody from Biloxi? Three hours up to Jackson. Well, we coming, and you're going to be the special guest, so you yeah. can, you got them, you can direct so us to where we so go. find me, of course, on, on the tour. I'm opening. Yeah, most definitely. And we're going to get with you, because we're working on this 85 South Show app. OK. We could definitely use you at our table. Yeah, of for sure. Um, insights and Showing some of the nation. ins and outs, some of the things to avoid and to go to war. Right. So what's gonna, what, what the app is going to be about, though? Well, are, they, it, are we too early to talk about it? No, it's going to be somewhere exclusive where you can get 85 South Show content, merch, tickets. Um, Personalized experiences. Exactly. You know, get us to make messages. To where you can see 85% of fan art links to everybody else's individual things and stuff like that. Really just trying to centralize. Well, I got you. Let me know when the round table is. Yeah. I'll be there. Well, you know, this is the initial meeting of many, so we'll, okay. we'll make sure we keep you involved in our network of, you know, black excellence over here on the black market. Yes. Miss Sheena Allen. Yes. Mississippi's <laughs> finest. Make sure you hit her up. Cause we taking over, baby. 
Shayna, pose for the picture. Hold on, we getting in here, cause oh. we on some Mississippi shit. Chico, jump on the couch so we look like we went to college together. All right, bet. <laughs> yeah, I be at college. <laughs> Thank you.